uh, Morrison, uh, together with the Fiji's Prime Minister, uh, a lot of progress uh, has uh, been made uh, on this partnership. Uh, and uh, as we are uh, about to commence with the, with the actual construction, which uh, will be uh, commencing uh, almost immediately, uh, now they're doing the fencing work. Uh, it is anticipated that uh, from May this year to December next year, uh, the project will be uh, fully uh, completed. <clears throat> but uh, there's a lot of interest now on the uh, project from the various stakeholders. Uh, let me also say, Honorable Speaker, sir, that although it's a Fiji-owned facility uh, and will be fully utilized for our domestic needs, uh, there are also plans uh, uh, to use it for the benefit uh, of the region and, of course, uh, the, perhaps uh, the multilateral uh, bodies that uh, do uh, help us uh, during uh, events uh, and, of course, uh, in line with global uh, arrangements, Honorable Speaker, sir. Uh, the key uh, progress. Uh, cabinet has endorsed on the 16th of April uh, the MOU between uh, the government of Fiji. This is just to formalize the discussions that uh, have been taking place that I've already uh, alluded to earlier. So on the 16th of April, Cabinet endorsed and on the same day uh, it was signed between Fiji uh, and uh, the Australian government. And uh, that has brought the uh, project management team again into 90, and uh, let me also say, Honorable Speaker, said that uh, the good thing about this project is, uh, although we will have the project management team, but in terms of the architectural design, and of course in the construction as well, it will involve um, uh, locals, but of course uh, with a uh, few of the experts from the uh, engineer regiment uh, in Australia who are tasked with the project management. Uh, key. Uh, components uh, of the, the project, Honorable Speaker, sir. Uh, one is the UN school, the facility, the training facility itself. Uh, you know what it's like at uh, the then QEB and, of course, at uh, uh, ATG Nasinu. But this will be a state of the art uh, facility. And uh, uh, the, the, the school itself uh, will be uh, at the center of the uh, of the camp. And uh, in that training facility, Honorable Speaker, sir, uh, again, uh, it will focus on peace operations. That's the new terminology, uh, terminology now. It's no longer peacekeeping operations, but peace operations. So we will, that will be the uh, focus of the training. Apart from uh, uh, HADR, Humanitarian Assistance and uh, Disaster Relief Training, uh, and uh, of course, uh, as I've alluded to earlier, uh, our policemen are also involved uh, in peace uh, operations. Uh, and of course, there are also considerations, but subject to the completion of the project and the discussions that will take place about even uh, not having another separate uh, regional police training facility, but perhaps it can be uh, annexed uh, into uh, this facility. Uh, and then the Accommodation blocks, uh, this is a, a big component of the project as well. Uh, we already have uh, two buildings in place uh, constructed by the RFMF, those will remain. And then, but uh, part of this project is the additional facility uh, <coughs> that will be uh, constructed. Uh, logistics, uh, warehouse, warehousing, very, very critical, not only for the military stores, uh, for peace operations, but most importantly for HADR as well. This is uh, part of the lessons learned from our previous disasters. And uh, Australia has done uh, the same at uh, Brisbane uh, Airport, where they have such facility, where the warehouse is brought close to the airport so that uh, it can be uh, accessible uh, and makes uh, logistics, uh, uh, particularly in the, in the uh, pushing of uh, stores to the, the, 
various locations to, to be much, much easier. So the logistics and the warehousing is a key component. And um, another big one, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, is the medical facility. And uh, there are already discussions with the Minister of Health. That medical facility will be right next to the, the main entrance, the gate, and it will be uh, also utilized by the uh, locals uh, within the area. So it's accessible uh, to, uh, to the uh, communities in Wutu level, uh, and uh, it's not restricted uh, to those that utilize the facility, uh, particularly the surplus personnel. And of course, uh, the other utilities like uh, <coughs> water tanks and so forth, and of course, uh, no establishment campus such cannot go without a rugby oval, and at the center of this will be the rugby oval, which will be used for uh, other purposes as well. And that's the, uh, the, the facility itself. Uh, enhancement of uh, Fiji's capacity for global peace uh, operations, honorable speaker, sir. Uh, peace operations in the world now has shifted a lot, no longer the traditional peacekeeping uh, as previously. Uh, and uh, this is where the new partnership, uh, I have mentioned it in this house, honorable speaker, sir, there is a high level independent report that was tabled uh, to the UN Security Council uh, in uh, 2016. This is sort of shaping the way peace operations are, are to be conducted in the future. And one of these uh, <coughs> the key uh, aspects of this uh, HIPPO report, as they call it, Honorable Speaker, sir, is uh, regional approaches. And we, as we are developing uh, BlackRock at this stage, we are also partnering with Australia and New Zealand uh, in trying to uh, uh, prepare ourselves uh, and can be a template for the United Nations uh, to adopt in terms of the new approaches to peace operations according to the, uh, the HIPPO report. So it provides us with this opportunity as we are developing this, uh, this uh, facility, Honorable Speaker, sir. And for that, uh, we are not only, we are very experienced peacekeepers, but peacekeeping uh, peace operations has uh, <coughs> uh, also changed significantly and therefore we are also fully utilizing the services of uh, Australian and New Zealand trainers and at the same time as before we also have these exchange programs where we are also sending uh, our team across to Linton and, uh, and uh, Weuru and of course uh, to Australia as well uh, for exchange programs and we have one of our uh, majors uh, currently in the uh, peace uh, operations uh, uh, school uh, in Canberra uh, on a two years uh, exchange program and this is all part of the way forward in terms of peace support operations and with that uh, we will look at our commitments uh, particularly in our standby arrangements uh, these are all part of the package as we are uh, developing uh, BlackRock facility. I'll I'll stop there, Mr. Speaker.